Okay, so this video is going to be pretty short, but I just want to spend a little bit more time discussing the written response. Uh, this will come after your 70 question multiple choice exam. Uh, your AP coordinator will then give you a printout of your personal project reference sheet that you submitted to the digital portfolio uh, by April 30th. That was part of your create project. Um, that is where you had to do the screenshots and copy and paste. Uh, you had one area where you were supposed to uh, do a screenshot of a procedure that included uh, the use of a parameter sequencing selection and iteration uh, then you were also supposed to provide evidence through screenshots of where that procedure was called at least once in your overall program code um, then there is another section dealing with uh, collection types for majority of students it's going to be a list or an array um, and one of the Category, the next two categories, one of them consists of the creation of that collection type, uh, so the creation of the list, how it's populated, um, and then the second part is how that collection type, the list or the array, is used throughout the program, where it's used somewhere in the program to uh, modify data, to create new data, et cetera. So uh, you'll be using that from your program to answer the questions. You will have one hour uh, to answer four prompts. So if you break that down, that's about 15 minutes per prompt, um, which is not a lot of time. Um, so I apologize, this is a little blurry, but um, prompt number one is going to focus on program design, function, and purpose. So make sure you are prepared to respond to prompts about the program that it says any of the following learning objectives. So any of these standards you need to be prepared to answer about. So one describing the purpose of a computing innovation could be your program, it could be another one. Um, explain how a program or code segment functions. Identify inputs to a program. Identify outputs produced by a program. If I were a betting man, I would probably guess that if I have a question or a prompt that involves inputs, it's probably also going to include outputs, but that's just a guess. Um, develop a program using a development process. Um, that would be a good area to perhaps tie in uh, iterative development, top-down design, um, you know, making sure you're using high-level abstraction. All of those would be good to sprinkle in there. Um, design a program and its user interface. And describe the purpose of a code segment or program by writing documentation. So any of those, um, so writing documentation, that would perhaps be like comments in your code. Um, being able to kind of explain a certain chunk of code, what it's doing, um, in, you know, maybe even you get into what's the input, what's the output with that, um, just what does this chunk of code do? Um, all right, so that is prompt one, okay? Prompt two consists of three parts, 2A, 2B, and 2C. 2A is going to center on combining and modifying existing algorithms, so any of these, uh, Things could be fair game, so any of these prompts uh, could be tied in. So explain how a program or code segment functions. Evaluate expressions that use relational operators. All right, so explaining how it functions, that's just being able to break down what it's doing. Um, evaluating expressions that use relational operators. Um, if you go back to um, just your mathematical operators, you would also have um, so in JavaScript and what a lot of students do with code.org, um, that would even tie into your less than, greater than, so comparing one value to another. Um, you also have your logical operators, the or, the and, um, the not equal to, um, which is that next one right there, so um, logic operators. So relational operators typically means your mathematical operators that you're used to seeing a lot, less than, greater than, equal to. Um, logical operators would be the or, the and, the not equal to. Uh, determine the result of conditional statements, so evaluating if-else statements, uh, whether or not they evaluate to true or false, understanding those Boolean values. Uh, express an algorithm that uses iteration without using a programming language. Um, so that is going to basically be a loop, but being able to express uh, something that uses a loop that repeats itself without necessarily putting it in a specific programming language, so just telling something to repeat so many times or to repeat until a condition is met or to repeat as long as a condition is true. Um, so that determine the result or side effect of iteration statements. So perhaps you have an uh, iteration 
what's going to happen, what's the result, um, how could that complicate your code. Um, perhaps you are given an entirely separate one and what that would do to your code if it were put in um, or how you could fit it into your code. I'm not exactly sure where they're going with that, but just understand what an iteration statement is is typically going to be a loop. Um, compare multiple algorithms to determine if they yield the same side effect or result. So looking at two separate algorithms and seeing if they in fact wind up with the same end result. Um, creating an algorithm, that is interesting. So even though you have your personal pro, uh, project reference, they could ask you to create an algorithm on the fly that accomplishes something. Um, combine and modify existing algorithms. So they may ask you to do something with an existing algorithm that you have, but to add something to it. So you have to be prepared for all of that. Uh, to me, this prompt is probably going to be the uh, toughest um, just because it's so vague with what it could cover. This is the first year we're seeing this, so hopefully we'll have more information next year. All right, prompt 2B, errors in testing. Uh, to me, this should be the easiest. Um, students should be prepared to respond to prompts about their program that assess any of the following learning objectives, so identify the error, correct the error. It could be that you are asked, you know, during the course of creating your program, could you, can you recall an error that you occurred, how you found it, what you did to fix it? Or they could uh, ask you to look, identify a section of your code that if something was different, it would cause a runtime error or a logic error. So for this uh, particular area, make sure you are familiar with runtime errors, logic errors, and syntax errors. Um, and then lastly, identify inputs and corresponding expected outputs or behaviors that can be used to check the correctness of an algorithm or program. Um, so just kind of explaining, okay, well, I created this algorithm now I'm going to test it out to make sure it generates the desired results. So what are you going to test for? You want to try to find the kind of minimal value that it can accept, the maximum value it can accept, and you should have different expected outcomes and test for each one. So if it's something dealing with numbers, you probably, you definitely want to try, you know, if it's considered part of it, negative numbers, uh, zero, positive numbers, um, you know, what range is it a, you know, if else statement that at a certain point it's going to do something different, you know, try the, the number of values that are right at that switching point. Um, and that would kind of be what it's looking for there. Okay. Prompt four, the last one to see, um, data and procedural abstraction. So develop data abstraction using lists to store multiple elements. So just explaining that by using a list or an array, you are simplifying the code so you don't have to have 9 million variables. Um, that's an example of data abstraction. Um, explain how the use of data abstraction manages complexity in a program code. Kind of ties in with that last one, okay? Um, by using um, functions, by using data structures, or not data structures, sorry, by using um, collection types like lists and arrays. Um, if you used objects, um, that can help, again, simplify the code. It can make it uh, shorter, more condensed, more efficient. Um, so that's what they're going for there. Okay, write iteration statements to traverse a list. So being able to go through a list based on the number of items in the list um, and inspect each item one at the time. Make sure you know how to do that. Uh, and I believe that would have been, those of you that use code.org, I believe that is going to be unit five or unit six um, so just kind of go back and look at that. Um, determine the result of an algorithm that includes list traversal. So you can kind of see this is probably going to hit on your list that you used in your code. Um, explain how the use of procedural abstraction manages complexity in the program. Um, so notice data abstraction, procedural abstraction. So I probably misspoke earlier. Um, so data abstraction would be using a list or uh, an array. Procedural abstraction would be using functions, uh, functions with parameters. Um, so I do apologize for that uh, misstatement earlier, um, but they are closely related, okay? Um, so those are the areas to kind of practice writing about, um, go through, look at your code. Uh, it would not be a bad idea to answer all of these based on the program you created. Obviously you can't ask your teacher for feedback. Um, at this point, but it wouldn't hurt just for your own peace of mind to see if you can write a response based on all of these different prompts um, with your program. I know some of them are vague, but um, if you get something closely related, it will probably help you relax a little bit on the exam.